you are from the belly of the beast when it comes to elites. You PhD from Berkeley. You've worked in the media for a long time. You live in Brooklyn. What have you learned about elite circles in media that the average person should know? You know, <laughs> I try to be as generous as possible, both because I'm religious, but also because I think you can be more effective when you give people the benefit of the doubt and assume the best of them, and maybe they'll hear what you have to say. It's very hard when talking about the media. Um, do you guys know who Chris Arnotti is? Of, yeah, of course, yeah. 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 I so, inter interviewed him. Were, were you there? No, I've done. interviewed him once. He's amazing. His book, Dignity, Changed My Life. And he, he's worked in many different industries. I think he's worked in five different industries. He was a banker, and then he was a journalist, and he was a novelist, and then he was a couple others. And he said of all the industries he worked in, the journalists were the least impressive, the most petty, the least intellectually curious, the most territorial, you know, just insecure, narcissistic, like just awful like hall monitor types <laughs> but like who like are so you know like who are pretty sure that like they're not as smart as the next guy but working really hard to make sure nobody knows that you know if narcissism is like defined as like the the unquenchable thirst for unearned recognition that is the media and they're waging war on the working class it's class warfare like make no mistake about it they are terrified to let anybody outside their class have their say because they are worried it will be the end of their reign. And they really believe, like I said, we started with this, like that if you don't have a credential, you don't, you're not a full citizen. And so they would never let working class people back in. Journalism used right. to be a working class trade. Right. You don't learn how to do journalism in, in university. There's nothing they can teach you. You have to learn how to become a good listener and question your biases, both of which our universities are teaching against, right? So it, it's, but yet they would never let anybody through the doors. And I was being interviewed by some, oh, I was in a debate the other day about whether the elites have betrayed America. And the guy I was debating was like, it's great. Look at the Senate. Look at Congress. Look at the media. It's all only staffed by people who are experts in their field or doctors or lawyers that have multiple degrees. And I was like, is this guy trying to make my argument for me? Like, <laughs> that's not how a democracy works. Like, you know, today I was being interviewed by a leftist and I see, he's asked me a question. I said, well, here's how the working class sees it. He's like, I'm not interested. I know they see it that yeah. way, but they're wrong. So th that's not how a democracy works. If the majority of the people want something, it's supposed to happen, whether or not the experts think it should. And again, like we just what we've seen over the last eight years, we've seen the expert class beclown themselves, whether it's COVID and the medical expert class, the foreign policy expert class, which Trump showed were full of hot air, the economics experts, my God, with this immigration in the aggregate and free trade will save us and blah, blah, blah. Like there's nothing there. There is nothing there. A person who is living on a shoestring budget knows more about the economy than any of these experts ever will. We've said repeatedly on the show, especially as Roka has grown a little bit and you meet more people higher up in news orgs in New York City and elsewhere, and you just realize who works there, especially at the lower level, <laughs> and how they actually police New York Times. I mean, they talk about inmates running the asylum. The New York Times essentially runs off its slack board more than anything else or Twitter gossip and uh, a, a sort of a culture of self-censorship that has led to ideological one-sidedness. Now, you also point out, I mean, New York Times in 2009 almost went bankrupt. So they changed their model. They pushed subscription heavy. Now they have a clear base. They cater to that base, yada, yada. But the types of people who work there just do not reflect America. So I, I wonder what would happen if you did loosen the grips of that over cadet credential class honor major institutions from government but more importantly the media i wonder what downstream effect that would have on just creating more focus toward that part of the country creating more energy more concern and then all of a sudden you do have a revival you have more successful towns you have people who talk about it and i believe you know i believe we can do we've lost that will in the same way that we got to the moon in nine years we built the golden gate bridge and what five years we you know all these great things we did and we've just sort of lost that will and i wish there was just that umph in dc 